Welcome to Math 20 Video Lecture Series. In this video, pag-uusapan natin ang inverse trigonometric functions. So, magsimula na tayo. So, recall natin yung previous lesson natin na kapag meron tayong one-to-one -one function, meron siyang inverse function. At yung inverse function ng one-to-one -one function f, asan yung f? The function f is the function which we write as f inverse, parang ganyan f, tapos may negative 1 sa taas such that, pag kinuha mo yung composition nila, uh, you get x. Okay? And the x here, dapat pasok sa domain ni f, kasi una mong pinapasok si, f, si x kay f. And then, sa pangalawa, x ay, nasa range ni, range ni f. Okay? Ah, kasi ang range ni f is domain ng inverse uh, function mo. And let us also recall kung paano natin kinocompute yung inverse ng isang one-to-one -one function. So, kunwari, we want to find the inverse of 2x plus 1. Ang ginagawa natin, ini-interchange natin yung roles ni x and y, and you compute for y. Then, yung lalabas na function doon is the inverse of the given function. So, in this case, x equal to 2y plus 1. So, magiging x minus 1 equal to 2y. So, y is x minus 1 over 2. So, ito yung inverse function. So, this is the inverse function. So, ang goal natin ngayon is hanapan ng inverse function yung mga trigonometric function. Ang kaso, may problema tayo. Yung trigonometric functions are not one-to-one. -one. So, iba na ito. Okay. So, makikita natin yun sa graph nila. Okay. So, trig functions are not one-to-one. So, take for example, y equal to sine x, or the sine function. Okay, so our f of x here is sine x. So, ito yung graph niya. So, this is not one-to-one, -one kasi pag nagpadaan ka ng horizontal line, it intersects the graph more than once. So, hindi siya one-to-one. -one. So, ang gagawin lang natin, yung sine function na may graph na ito, is puputulin natin siya somewhere so that it is one-to-one. -one. So, ang putol na ginagawa for the sine function ay, yung x natin ay from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 lang. Okay? So, kumbaga, yun lang i-consider natin na part ng function. So, pag pinutol natin, we will get something like this. Okay. So, burahin na natin ito. Hmm. And sabi natin sa previous lessons natin that yung graph ng inverse ng 1 to 1 function is its reflection with respect to y equal to x or about this line. So, pag kinuha natin yung reflection nitong red curve na ito, that is the graph of the uh, of this restricted sine function. So, ano itsura nun? Okay. Something like this. Okay. So, yung green, this, this green curve, yun na yung graph ng uh, inverse ng restricted sine function. Burahin ko na ito. Oops. Okay, so si green siya yung inverse sine function. At paano ulit natin ginagawa yung pagsosolve ng inverse function? At pinag-interchange natin yung x and y. So, itong green ay may equation na x equal to sine y. And whenever we see this, 
it means uh, y equal to o yung gamit yung notation natin yung may negative 1 sa taas we get this one and we call this one the inverse sign of function which means pag nakita nyo to ito lang yung ibig sabihin nito and the domain of the inverse sine function or sine inverse is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 ito yung graph niya si green and ang range niya ay from negative 1 to 1 okay ay oops hindi pala ang domain niya ay sorry so domain na mali ako nang tinignan so yung domain of sine inverse is the range of of sine. Ano yung range ng sine? Siya yung pula para mas madali makita. So, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Natama naman pala sinabi. Okay, and ang range ni sine inverse is the domain of sine. Which is ang domain ng sine Oops, baliktad. Sorry, baliktad. Ba yan? <laughs> Simula pala, kakalat na. <laughs> okay, so domain ng sine inverse is the range of sine. Ito yung sine. Ang range niya ay yung sa y. So, negative 1 to 1. At yung range ni sine inverse is the domain of sine. So, ito si sine. Anong domain niya? Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, ulit ha. So, ang domain ng sine inverse is negative 1 to 1. Ang range ni sine inverse is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, kung titignan natin yung graph na ito, ang domain niya ay ito yung negative 1 ito yung 1. So, parang naglalaro siya dito. That is the domain nung green, yung sine inverse. And the range is negative pi over 2. So, from here to here. So, ito yung range niya. Okay? Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we state that formally and do some examples. Ah, nasaan na yan? Yes. So, this is the inverse sine function. So, when you see this, it means x equal to sine y. Where y is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and x negative 1 to 1. Okay? Kaya ang domain niya, negative 1 to 1 and its range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and this is the graph. Okay, so let us do some examples. So example, what is sine inverse? Um, square root of 3 over 2. A square root of 3 over 2, pasok yan sa negative 1 to 1. So para mahanap natin yung value niya, you let that y. At anong ibig sabihin no? Ng sine inverse of something equal to y. It means sine y equal to that something. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, sine y equal to square root of 3 over 2. So, ngayon, yung y na yan, angle yan, ba? So, anong angle? In negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, andito yon will give sine y square root of 3 over 2. And ano magiging sagot dyan? I think that is pi over that is pi over 3. Uh, big, so, ibig sabihin, sine inverse square root of 3 over 2 is pi over sorry, pi over 3. Okay. Okay, let's do another one. What is sine inverse 0? So, ganun ulit. You let y. You let that y, yung sine inverse of something. And then, 
magiging sin y equal to 0. So, parang ito pwede mong lagay sa kabila. So, what y from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 will give sin y equal to 0. And the answer is 0. So, therefore, sin inverse 0 is 0. And last, for this example, what is sine inverse of 5? Hindi siya defined kasi yung pwede mo lang daw ipasok dito na x is from negative 1 to 1. And this 5 is not in negative 1 to 1. So this is undefined. Ay, hindi nyo pala nakikita. Sorry. So, sine inverse 5 is undefined because this one is not in negative 1 to 1. Okay, so that's why it's undefined. Okay? And ganun din yung gagawin sa iba kay sine, ah, kay cosine, tangent, go tangent, secant, cosecant. Ititrim siya somewhere and then ire-reflect about y equal to x. And I have a summary here together with the uh, graphs. Iisa-isahin natin sila. So, so we're done with sign. Okay, so ito una natin diniscuss. So, this is the function. This is the domain or yung allowed x value. This is the range. Yung mga nilalabas nito. Or the y. And this is the graph. And for tangent inverse, ganun din, y equal to tangent inverse x, it means x equal to tangent y. The range, uh, the domain is the set of real numbers. So, kahit anong x, pwede mong ilagay dito. Pero yung ilalabas niya na value ng y, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 lang. So, pinagsama ko itong dalo. Actually, ito yung magkasama, no? Kasi yung range nila hawig. So, ganyan ko siya uh, ina-arrange. And this is the graph of tangent inverse. I have an asymptote here. Negative pi over 2, pi over 2. So, pag -ano. And for cosine inverse, the domain is negative 1 to 1. The range is 0 to pi. And ito yung graph niya. This is the graph. For cotangent inverse, the domain is the set of real numbers and the range is 0 to pi. So pansinin ninyo yung sa cosine inverse and cotangent inverse, yung range nila magkahawig. And this is the graph of cotangent inverse. And for secant inverse, this is the domain, and this is the range. And this is the graph. Okay, so, pinapresent lang natin bago natin gamitin yung mamaya. So, huwag kayong matakot. Okay, while for cosecant inverse, this is the domain, this is the range, and this is the graph. Okay. So, let us do some examples lang. So, uh, observe pala muna natin yung mga range. Okay. Para hindi kayo mahirapan, or para hindi tayo mahirap uh, i-absorb ito, you can think of this sine inverse, tangent inverse, cosine inverse, this inverse trig functions, ang nilalabas nila, angles lang. So, si sine inverse and tangent inverse, so, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, pwede nyo isipin, a angle in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4 lang yun. With this restriction. And for cosine inverse and cotangent inverse, angle lang siya sa somewhere here, quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Or yung kay cosine, pwede dito sa end. Pwede dito, pwede dito. 
Pwedeng sa 0, pwede sa pi. And for secant inverse, so ang range niya, 0 to pi over 2, pi to 3 pi over 2, angle sa quadrant 1 or quadrant 3 lang niya. And for cosecant inverse, so this is secant inverse, this is cosecant inverse, the range. Ay! Nawala yung up case, nag-crash. Nasaan na yun? Sorry, nag-crash yung up. Okay, so for cosecant inverse, the range is uh, negative pi to negative pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. Okay, hindi kasali ito. Hindi kasali ito. Okay, so parang angle yung quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. So ulit yung kay secant inverse. 0 to pi over 2. So ito yung hindi kasali. Pi to 3 pi over 2. Okay? Okay, gawa tayo ng examples. So, what is arc cosine negative 1? Ano ibig sabihin ng arc? So, when you see yung arc, ibig sabihin lang nun, inverse. So, when I say arc cosine, it means cosine inverse. So, same lang gagawin natin. You let that be y. So, pwede mong ilipat ito sa kabila, magiging cosine na lang siya. Negative 1 equal to cosine y. So, what angle y from 0 to pi will give a cosine of negative 1? So, it's pi. So, y is pi. So, the value of this is pi. Okay, another example. Number 2. Uh, tangent inverse negative square root of 3. Same ulit. You let that equal to y. And then, you get negative square root of 3 equal to tangent y. So again, anong y? From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, hindi kasali ito not included, okay? So, yung y mo nandito will give you a tangent y equal to negative square root of 3. So, that is, uh, dapat nandito siya, ano, kasi negative. Hindi pwede sa quadrant 1. So, isa lang nandito siya. So, ang bibigay nun ay negative pi over 3. So, tangent inverse negative square root of 3 is negative pi over 3. Okay, so, bigay tayo ng iba pa. So, we have arc cosecant of negative 2. Okay, ulit. Arc cosecant, this means cosecant inverse. So, gawin natin y yun. Let that be y. So, what do we get? Negative 2 is equal to cosecant y. Where y mo ay maglalaro sa anong range ni cosecant? This is the range. So, hindi kasala ito from here. And then 0. So this is negative pi. Negative pi over 2. 0 to pi over 2. So hindi tayo sanay. Kung memorize nyo, okay lang naman. Pero kung hindi sanay, you can express it in terms of sine. So take the reciprocal of both sides. Negative 1 half sine y. So which y value na nasa interval na ito? will give a sign of negative 1 half. So, dapat somewhere, andito siya. Okay, so, over negative 
pi over uh, pi over 3. Anong multiple ni negative pi over 3? Okay, kung aanda tayo pabalag, this is negative uh, oops, it's negative pi it's negative, not pi over 3 it's negative pi over 6 okay negative pi over 6, nandito siya negative 1 half din yun, no? kaso kailangan yun nandito yung makuha natin so move tayo dito para parehan ng y value and this is negative 5 pi over 6 Okay. Is that right? Let us check. Pi over 6, 1 half. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, arc cosecant negative 2 is negative 5 pi over 6. And, we actually have the cancellation properties nila. Kapag kinuha mo yung composition, ay! Okay, so, ito yung important property lang nila. So, yung circ inverse ng circular function ni theta. So, this circ, pwede nyo palitan ng sine, cosine, tangent. Kung anin na trig function is equal to theta. As long as theta ay pasok sa domain nito. Okay? So, ang domain is it. Yung restricted cert function. Okay? Or, yung domain ni cert ay range ni cert inverse or range nung nasa labas. Okay? And then, um, kapag nasa labas naman yung circ, this is theta. As long as this theta ay pasok sa domain nito. So, yun yung two important properties natin. So, gamitin nga natin siya. Okay, so what is cosine of cosine inverse pi over 2? So parang ang gagamitin natin ito, no? Ang tanong, is this theta pasok sa domain na to? So is pi over 2 pasok sa domain ng cosine inverse? Yes, kasi ang domain ni cosine inverse ay ibang domain yan. Ay, oops, may mali pala dito. Mali yung tanong ko, sorry. Ano ba yan? Mali-mali ako sa ano ito. Pagod na. Charo. Okay, so ito, ganito na lang. Cosine inverse of cosine pi over 2. Okay? So dito pala tayo mag magpo-fall. Okay, so, is this pi over 2 pasok sa domain nito? Nung restricted cosine? Or is this pi over 2 pasok sa range ni cosine inverse? Si cosine inverse, ang range niya 0 to pi. And this is pi over 2. So, yes, pasok. So, ibig sabihin, mag-hold yung cancellation. So, this is just pi over a 2. Okay, so let's do another example. What is sine of sine inverse 0.5? Okay. So, this 0.5, pasok ba sa domain ni sine inverse? Ang domain ni sine inverse is negative 1 to 1. So, yes, pasok siya. So, mag-hold yung cancellation. So, the answer here is 0.5. Okay, so, number two, number three, cotangent inverse, cotangent 7 pi over 9. 
Okay, ang tanong, pasok ba ito sa domain ni Cotangent? Or pasok ba ito sa range nung nasa labas? Okay. So, ano yung range nung nasa labas? So, ang range niya ay uh, Zero to pi. Seven pi over nine is greater than zero but less than pi. So somewhere nandito si seven pi over nine. So yes, pasok siya. So pwede mo makancel lang yun. Okay. Okay, number. At Anong number na tayo? Number 4? Uh, what is tangent inverse ng tangent 9 pi over 7? Okay. Itong 9 pi over 7, pasok ba sa domain nito? Or equivalently, is 9 pi over 7 pasok sa range ni tangent inverse? Ang range ni tangent inverse negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Somewhere dyan. Masan si 9 pi over 7? Uh, 9 pi over 7 nasaan yun? That is so yung pi hatiin mo sa pito kuha ka ng sham. So, this is 7 pi over 7. So, somewhere dito siya. This is 9 pi over 7. Okay? So, ano bang property ng tangent? So, note na ang tangent, pwede kang magdagdag or magbawas ng ng pi, you still get the same value. So, ganun lang yung gagawin natin dito para makuha natin yung nasa kabila. Okay? So, magbabawas tayo ng babawas tayo ng pi. So, this is 9 pi over 7 minus pi or 9 pi minus 7 pi over 7 or uh, 2 pi over 7. Therefore, dito sa tangent na ito, you can replace 9 pi over 7 by 2 pi over 7. Tago natin sa pangalang star. So, tangent inverse ng tangent 2 pi over 7. And this angle, pasok na siya sa range ni tangent inverse. So, cancel na natin. So, it is 2 pi over 7. And last example, uh, what is arc sine sine 4 pi over 7? So, ganun ulit yung tanong. Is 4 pi over 7 pasok sa domain ni sine, ng restricted sine? Or, Equivalently, is 4 pi over 7 pasok sa range ng sine inverse? Ano bang range ni sine inverse? That is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Pasok ba siya dyan? Asan si 4 pi over 7? Uh... Si pi, hatiin mo sa pito, kunin mo yung apat. So, more than half yun ni, ni pi. So, somewhere andito si 4 pi over 7. So, nasaan yung sine 4 pi over 7? Zoom in natin. Ha? So, itong part na ito, itong value dito, that is sine 4 pi over 7. Okay. And observe, na pareha lang siya kuwari. Next time ko ito with this angle. 
Pareha lang sila na makukuwang sign value. So, ang tanong, what is this angle? Di ba ano lang yun? To get... Tapos markahan natin, ha? Okay, so to get this pink angle, this angle with this pink terminal side, parang ire-reflect mo lang yung ire-reflect mo lang ito sa kabila. So yung measure lang nito is yung measure dun sa kabila. Okay, so ano yung measure no? Ito ay pi minus 4 pi over 7. which is 3 pi over 7. So, this angle is 3 pi over 7. So, this is arc sine sine ng uh, 3 pi over 7. At ngayon, pasok na ito, itong si 3 pi over 7 sa range ng arc sine or ng sine inverse. So, pwede natin i-cancel. So, the value is 3 pi over 7. Okay, so, let us, gusto nyo i-check yung answer natin. Ano yung pinapahanap? Okay, so, we have this uh, calculator here. Ano ba yan? Lagay natin sa kabila. Ayan. So, ang hinahanap natin ay sine inverse of sine uh, 4 pi over 7. And the answer is, ay hala, hindi pala siya kita. And the answer is, as you can see, it is, oops, hala, ba't nagaganan siya? And the answer is, 3 pi over 7, trust me. <laughs> Okay, so, i-screenshot ko na lang para makita ninyo. Yes, 3 pi. 3 pi over a 7. And the other one, yung cotangent inverse, um, Cotangent inverse of cotangent seven pi over nine. So this is just an illustration. Okay, natin change check. Oops. Aba ka iba yung restriction nito. Uh, iba yung restriction nung sa calculator. So, kailangan aware din tayo doon. Ang restriction na gamit natin ay from 0 to pi. Okay. Kaya mag-expect tayo ng uh, positive na sagot. Asan ba si negative 2 pi over 9? Iba yung gamit niya eh. So, ang gamit niya ito. Yung part niya. Ito yung gamit. Okay. Sino pa ba? Okay, si sine ng sine inverse 0.5 Yes, 0.5 din yung sagot And cosine inverse ng cosine pi over 2 
it's pi over two. Okay, so that ends our lecture on inverse trigonometric functions. Pero part one pa lang ito. So sa susunod na video, um, i-integrate na natin yung mga previous lesson natin with this inverse trig function.